I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin at Widener's Gardens Nursery in Encinitas, California, and this is their front display garden. It runs along the parking lot in front of the nursery, and it is a perfect example of how you can combine succulents to create a lush, low water, easy care, low maintenance garden. Now, this mound was installed by Laura Eubanks. She did a demonstration at the nursery. And then Sabina Hildebrand, who's their on-staff succulent specialist, continued the garden along the street to the corner. Over by the Widener sign, there is an Agave Desmetiana in bloom. So you can see that she's incorporated some of the plants that Laura used, more of the crushed red and black lava rock. And then coming down the dry creek bed, low-growing Portulacaria afro variegata, or the variegated elephant's food, and aloes in bloom. You know, you can grow aloe vera. It's a great plant for your garden. It gives you those yellow flowers. There are kalanchoes. This is uh, kalanchoe silver spoons red paddle plants to just sort of finish off that corner. Sabina installed a Dracaena Draco, which is going to turn into a tree over time. Also for height, sticks on fire, which lends color. Aeonium kiwi. There's a lot of that, some of it just coming into bloom. It repeats the variegation of the Portulacaria afro variegata, or variegated elephant's food. There's Allostriata, or an Allostriata hybrid. And they stay small and they give you those really wonderful bright pops of orange. There's a natural terminus for the dry creek bed. You know, so often it's hard to figure out how to make it look natural. Well, if you have a drainage pipe, you can have it flow out of that and it'll look like it belongs. There are three uh, strips of hardscape here. The dry creek bed, the pathway of decomposed granite, and the top dressings of the volcanic rock. But it creates a natural swale. That's important when you're installing a dry creek bed, is it has to be below grade or it won't look right. It's important if you want a natural look for things to meander and weave, not be ramrod straight. In the mound that Laura Eubanks installed is a variegated Beshornaria yacoides. Yes, <laughs> it's related to agave and in the lily family and it is beautifully in bloom. Crassulas, which do really well by the coast, are regular Crassula ovata, or jade plant. Ripple jade, yellow jade, tricolor jade, golem and hobbit jade, which have sort of tubular or spoon-shaped leaves. All of these plants are readily available. The nursery carries them. And you can see here that they combine beautifully to make an easy care, low maintenance, colorful, textural garden. This is especially ideal for coastal maritime Southern California gardens. Some of these plants are frost tender, notably the crassulas and kalanchoes. So cover them if you need to if you live farther inland when frost is predicted. I've labeled the photos if you want to pause the video. Or you can find labeled photos on my website, DeborahLeeBaldwin.com. And of course, all these are described and shown in my books. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin at Widener's Gardens in Encinitas, California.